Greg, you're muted. OK, let's try that again. Uh, sorry, my name is Craig Easley with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. I want to welcome you to our first quarterly me meeting of the uh, of the new year. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope your 2021 is off to a good start. Um, and uh, we are going to get started with uh, with the meeting here just uh, just shortly. Uh, before we do, I wanted to ask anyone who uh, is attending and hasn't done so already, if you could register your attendance with us, we'd appreciate it. You can you can send an email to our outreach um, mailbox at outreach at tcq .gov and just give us your name and and contact information and we'd appreciate that greatly. Um, so again, welcome to welcome to the meeting and I uh, will also um, like to introduce the the other presenters that uh, will be uh, presenting uh, information and updates to us this this afternoon. Uh, so let me uh, first have uh, have Lori introduce herself. I'm Laurie Fleet. I'm a program specialist with the Water Quality Division. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to, I guess, Rebecca. I think you might be muted, Rebecca. OK, here I go again. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Rebecca Villalba, and I am the team leader of the stormwater team in the Water Quality Division. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Um, also, just want to mention a couple other folks who are working behind the scenes. Uh, Carissa Browder and, and Nancy Vignali are helping us out uh, in the background to keep things moving smoothly and keep us on the air here and remind us when we, uh, <laughs> we don't. Uh, unmute ourselves so appreciate them and their their uh, assistance and helping us all uh, go along smoothly so with that let's go ahead and get uh, into the agenda for this afternoon we're gonna we've got several different types of updates to give to you we'll first start off with uh, some general permit updates and we will begin with rebecca okay can you hear me okay um, all right, so I will uh, give you an update on our multi sector general permit that is known as the MSGP TXR 050,000. Uh, since the last time we met in the update, uh, the permit is continuing along very nicely on the renewal process. As a reminder, the permit expires on August 14 of this year, and we started the renewal process back on September 2019. Uh, since we last met, we published the draft permit and then we published the notice that the draft permit was available for common period in the Texas Register and seven newspapers. In the Texas Register and several newspapers, we published on December 11th of 2020, and that started the 30 day public comment period. The comment period uh, ended on January 14th. We published in the Texas Register, the San Antonio newspaper, a newspaper in Tyler, Austin, Odessa, Fort Worth, El Paso, and Amarillo. So those are all the ways that we announced as well as including the notice on our website. Uh, we held a public meeting on January 11th, 2021. It was a virtual public meeting. Uh, we had a lot of questions in the informal Q&A process. We answered a lot of questions. A lot of them were surrounding uh, signatory uh, delegation requirements, DMR requirements, a lot related to the electronic reporting requirements. Um, on, as a result of that, um, we had a lot of questions that were uh, good for us in order to figure out how to best uh, proceed with the draft permit. Approximately 230 people participated in the meeting, so that was really, really good attendance. I think that's the most we've ever had in attendance for I want a stormwater general permits, I guess, because it's available virtually. Um, we had seven individuals that provided formal oral comments during the public meeting. 
the presentation that we had uh, is available on our stormwater web pages. You can go to them. Um, so then on January 14th, the public comment period closed. And that's when everybody uh, that wanted to formally comment could comment either electronically or via mail. Uh, we received a lot of comments. We have not compiled them all because we're still waiting for some of them to come through the word process through mail. But we did receive a lot of comments. So that's what we are working on now. We're compiling those comments, working with legal, working with others within staff and other areas in the agency to respond to those comments. And that document will be uh, published when the draft permit is available for uh, everybody to see. You will see the official, what we call executive director's response to comments. So every comment, we will have a response to that. Um, so right now we're scheduled to complete this uh, comments, uh, repair, preparing the response to comments in March. At that time, we will begin briefing management, have internal review of any of the documents, legal review, and then we are scheduled to keep moving and send the information to our commissioners for a commissioner's agenda in July. So we're hoping to go to commissioner's agenda mid-July for a uh, presentation to adopt the uh, draft permit. And if so, if it gets adopted and it becomes effective then on August 14 of 2021. Please right now do not renew. Uh, the permit is currently is going to expire on August 14. So you cannot renew until the new issued permit uh, is effective. And so after the permit is effective, we hope you know in on August 14 that you will have 90 days to submit your renewal application. And so the applications that are available right now in a permits is not the one that you're going to be using. It'll be similar, but it will be updated. It will have new information. It will require new uh, new questions. So that will not be available until the permit gets issued. So please do not apply earlier. Uh, we appreciate that. But um, I will not go over the changes because those are posted on our website and I've already discussed those changes in previous um, meetings that we've had. But everything is on our website. Uh, and please know that if you do not uh, need to continue your permit coverage for whatever, whatever reason after the permit expires, then be sure that you terminate prior to September 1st of 2021, otherwise you're going to be assessed the water quality fee that we assess every September 1st. So please make sure again, you do not apply right now, wait until the permit gets renewed. You are going to be required to submit your application, what we know as your notice of intent, a renewal notice of intent via e-permits. You will no longer be able to apply via paper. The only way we accept the paper application is if you qualify for a waiver from electronic reporting. So we have a form that we need to provide to you if you feel you qualify uh, for a waiver from electronic reporting. Otherwise, all applications need to be submitted electronically. So like I said, right now we're, we're moving along really well. Uh, we're working on the response to the comments that, received, that we received, and we should be um, having a permit that's effective um, August 14 of this year. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm going to interject real quick. This is Greg again. Um, I've just realized that I failed to mention before we got started uh, about questions and answers. Um, just wanted to make sure for those who are not familiar with the, the virtual format that we do, um, we'll hold all answering of questions till the end of the, the update presentations, but you can in the uh, question and answer panel um, Type in your question at any time during uh, during the presentations, and we'll we'll handle them all at the end. So, uh, just wanted to get that in there real quick. So, take it away, Lori. Let's try that again. I have a couple of updates. Um, I have three general permits that I'm working on um, that are in the process of being renewed and amended. Um, the first one is the aquaculture general permit, that's TXG 13. 
zero 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 zero. Um, that general permit authorizes discharges into or adjacent to water in the state by aquaculture facilities and other activities related to aquaculture. Um, so the current permit expires in April of this year, so on April 18th. As Rebecca mentioned, do not submit your renewal application until after April 18th. Um, one of the major amendments that we're making to this general permit is to expand the applicability to include the new oyster mariculture program that was required by House Bill 1300 from last session. So that's one of the of the of the revisions that were made. That one uh, is probably the biggest one. Um, so project status: we um, we published notice October 2nd, and the comment period ended on November 2nd. And we did not receive any comments. So our next step is to go to commissioner's agenda on March 31st. My next general permit is the concrete batch general permit. That's TXG 110000. Um, current that that uh, renewal. Um, it, well, that general permit authorizes the discharge of facility wastewater and stormwater associated with industrial activities into or adjacent to water in the state from ready mix concrete plants, concrete production plants, and their associated facilities. And that covers SIC codes 3271, 3272, and 3273. Um, the current permit expires November 7, 2021. So we've still got a little ways to go on that one. Um, the current status is that um, the draft permit and fact sheet were submitted to EPA uh, last Monday on January 11th. EPA has a 90-day review period. Um, the next steps are, are um, once we get EPA's comments or uh, approval, uh, if they do have any comments, we'll work with EPA to resolve those. Um, fingers crossed, we get a no-objection letter. Um, after that, um, we will start briefing our management for permission to publish notice um, in the Texas Register and in statewide newspapers. And my last general permit uh, update is the pesticide general permit. That's TXG 87000. Um, that, that general permit um, authorizes the application of pesticides into, over, including near waters of the U.S. for a variety of tests. Um, that current permit expires in November, um, November 2nd, 2021. And the current project status on that one is that the draft permit and fact sheet were submitted to EPA last Monday also. So um, the pesticide and the concrete batch uh, general permit, uh, because they expire only a few days apart, they're really on the same track. Um, so again, um, EPA has 90 days from last Monday to either approve or submit to us any comments. Um, if we get a no objection letter or resolve EPA comments, the next step is then to brief management for permission to publish notice. So with that, I will turn it over to Rebecca for a rule update. Okay. Um Thank you, Laurie. So now moving on to the rule update that we currently are working on in the stormwater team. We're working on what we're calling the sand mining uh, rule. We received two petitions, one from the Texas Aggregate and Concrete Association, and also one from the Lake Houston Area Grassroots Flood Prevention Initiative back in June of this year, of, of last year, sorry, of, of June of 2020. So we received two petitions that were very similar. Both organizations or petitioners uh, asked that TCQ adopt a new rule that would establish best management practices for commercial sand mining and other lawful purposes within a very specific area of the San Jacinto watershed. So we started working on those petitions. You know, last August we went to the commissioners and commissioners during commissioners' agenda, they uh, agreed to us move forward with these petitions and start the rulemaking process with stakeholder involvement. We started working on the stakeholder involvement uh, process. We, have, we held the stakeholder meeting on November 10th of last year, and we presented to the, uh, to the stakeholders 
in the petitioners are a draft proposed rule and the next steps uh, regarding this uh, rulemaking. And another item related to the rulemaking is that the rulemaking, not only is it going to require that certain um, sand mining or APOs, aggregate production operations, implement certain best management practices, but we are going to have a best management practices document or guidance document outside of the rule that we can easily update that's going to include the BMPs that these entities are going to be required to implement. So that's another part of, of this rulemaking process is that we need to develop that BMP's guidance. So we presented those to the um, stakeholders on November 10th. They had a 30-day comment period. So the comment period ended on December 11th. We received comments from 14 stakeholders. And right now we have reviewed the stakeholder comments we are working on revising the draft rule to incorporate some of the comments and other things that we've learned since, since the beginning of this process. And so right now, uh, the comments will be posted, you know, hopefully next week on our TCQ webpage that we have dedicated to the sand mining uh, rule. You'll see all the comments received during the stakeholder meeting, as well as the comments that were received in writing after the 30-day comment period. There's not going to be a specific response provided uh, for each comment. The next opportunity will be when the draft rule is proposed. And right now we're working on moving forward to uh, go to commissioner's agenda on June 9th of this year to get permission to publish this um, draft rule on the, on the Texas Register so that everybody can see the draft rule and provide um, any comments. You'll have another opportunity to, to review the rule and provide official comments before we continue moving forward to adoption of the rule. So right now, the next opportunity would be when it's um, filed for what we call backup agenda, which would be a couple of weeks before June the 9th. So it will be around the middle of May when the we, we propose that this draft rule will be available again for the public to, to view. So right now that's what we are um, working on and the update on the sand mining rule. All right, so um, I'll move right into my next topic, which is the oil and gas delegation. Um, House Bill 2771 requires TCQ to submit a delegation request to EPA by September 1 of 2021 for regulatory authority for oil and gas discharges into water in the state. And then upon EPA delegation, um, railroad commission authority for these discharges will transfer to TCQ. So that's, that's what the bill did. Um, the status of that, that project is TCQ submitted our delegation application to EPA in October and EPA approved our application on January 15, 2021. So just last Friday, it was approved. TCQ now has state and federal authority for oil and gas discharges into water in the state. Um, I, I think we've mentioned it in the past, but it's worth mentioning again. Um, this authority is for discharges into water in the state. Um, it is not for discharges adjacent to water in the state. For example, if you're if you're using your wastewater for um, irrigation or landscaping, um, or if you're if you're evaporating, you're doing a 100% evaporation of that wastewater. Um, that stays with the railroad commission. So you would continue getting a railroad commission permit for that. Um, our authority is only for when discharges reach waters in the state. So the next step on that is that we are coordinating with EPA and Railroad Commission on transfer of all the records. Um, we're also developing a list of frequently asked questions. Um, as you can imagine, as um, soon as we came back to work um, after the holiday, um, we had quite a number of questions, both from consultants as well as uh, individual permittees um, about their specific facility. Um, and then also just some, uh, I guess, higher level general questions about the transfer. Um, and so what we're doing is developing a list of frequently asked questions. And if you have questions, in order for us to compile that list, it's helpful for us to get all the questions coming into one, um, one location. 
So if you have questions, submit them to HB2771 at tceq.texas.gov. Again, that's HB2771 at tceq.texas.gov. And I will touch on one question that we have had, um, and it, it is probably um, important for folks, um, especially if you have a permit either with railroad or with um, EPA that is expiring soon. Um, existing permittees must submit a renewal application to TCEQ prior to the earliest expiration date of either the EPA permit or the Railroad Commission permit. So if you have a, if one of those permits expires, say in the next 30 to 60 days, you need to start working on your renewal application right now. Um, our application forms are available on our TCEQ website. You can go to the uh, on the home page, click on form, and then you can do a search for industrial wastewater, and that'll get you to those forms. For facilities that are authorized under EPA's general permit, that's the TXG 26 and the TXG 33. Um, facilities that are authorized under those GPs um, can continue operating under those permits until TCEQ issues a general permit to replace EPA's permit. So those of you that are operating under EPA's GPs, just hang tight, keep just operating, keep complying with those EPA permits um, for the time being. We are working on some general permits, um, but you don't need to do anything at this time. Um, really, it's just those who have an individual permit with EPA or if you have a, a permit with Railroad Commission um, that's expiring soon, uh, be sure to submit that renewal application. Um, with that, I'll go into my next topic, which is um, the renewal deadline. Um, every individual permit in our what we call our boilerplate language requires the permittee to submit a renewal application at least 180 days prior to the permit expiration date. Now that is not, if that's included in EPA's permits, I'm not aware of that. So for you oil and gas folks that may be listening, um, this for right now is not going to pertain to you. Um, but it's for our existing TCC permittees. Again, your permit requires you to submit a renewal application at least 180 days before the permit expires. And we have historically not um, in, enforced that requirement. We have accepted applications up to the day before the permit expires and with no, no consequences. However, we are going to begin monitoring and tracking whether you are complying with that requirement. If you submit your application less than 180 days from the expiration date, it will be flagged as a violation. So I want to repeat that. Don't want anybody getting any violations because I didn't know. You are required to submit your renewal application 180 days before your permit expires. If you do not, it will be flagged as a violation. So um, need y'all to start getting your applications together as soon as possible and start meeting that 180 day uh, requirement. And with that, that's all I have. So I believe our next um, topic is the Q&A. All right, thank you, uh, Lori and Rebecca for those updates. Yeah, we'll now go into our uh, Q&A uh, part of the uh, agenda and just uh, go through the questions on the in the panel in the order that we received them. So I'll start off with the question of uh, will the electronic NOI submittal provide an option for submitting payment via check? And I don't know, Rebecca, you want to tackle that one? Um, yes, uh, that's a good question. Yes, even though you apply electronically via our e permit system, there's still the option for you to submit payment um, via check. So that that is Correct. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Um, and again, a reminder to folks, if you, if you have questions, you can keep typing them in and, and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, next question, Rebecca, in response to submitting an MSGP NOT prior to September 1st, does this also apply to the NECs? To clarify, all permittees must terminate active permits prior to September 1st if they no longer require permit coverage. 
and it will not simply expire on August 14th and terminate at an expiration. OK, so that was many questions in one, so I'll start off with the first one. So um, yes, um, you need to submit an NOT. You no longer need coverage under the MSGP prior to September 1st for both if you have an NOI and if you have an NEC, which is the no exposure certification. So for either one of those two, yes, you need to terminate prior to September 1st if you no longer need it. Um, so then the next question is, um, will they not just simply terminate after the deadline if they don't renew? And the answer is yes. You know, if after August 14, somebody does not renew, yes, when we run the expiration process, we give a grace period of 90 days. That's during the renewal period. You have 90 days that you are administratively continued and uh, until you renew. But if by the end of those 90 days, which falls around November or so, the middle of November, then we will run the expiration process and everybody that did not renew would automatically be expired. So it will not be terminated, it will be considered expired. Um, but since that, that, term, um, that process is not until November 14th, it's past the September 1st, meaning you will still get charged and assess that water quality fee um, effective September 1st. The permit is a reminder, it does require that if you no longer need permit coverage, that you submit a notice of termination. So that is a requirement of the permit. So we do urge everybody to submit the notice of termination if you no longer need your um, permit coverage for, for your site. All right, thanks, Rebecca. Um, oops. Sorry, I lost the next question. Just one moment here. Um, where did it go? Greg, I okay. can read it. You, you see it? I do. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's for Sorry. me. <laughs> so um, the question is, uh, Laurie, did I hear you correctly that for the aquaculture general permit, we should not submit the application until after April 18th, 2021. So for general permits, general permits, we, re, we TCQ renew the master general permit. After we renew it, then applicants apply for coverage. As Rebecca mentioned, usually it's a, it's a 90 day renewal period. So you do not submit your renewal application until after the April 18th. And again, it's usually 90 days that you have after April 19th. Individual permits, you have to renew those before they expire. So it's really important to keep those straight. If you have an individual permit, you have to submit your renewal before it expires. And again, 180 days before it expires. General permit authorization, you apply for coverage within 90 days after the permit expiration date. All right, thank you, Lori. Um, so next one's for Rebecca. Rebecca, we received a question from a Sector S facility regarding EPA MSGP updates and changes. To clarify, since the TCQ is the permitting authority in Texas, we will only be following changes to the TXR 05000 rather than the EPA MSGP? So, um, correct. So, EPA just issued their permit yesterday, and um, the permit applies to those areas where the state is not delegated for uh, MPDS stormwater program. In Texas, we are, so therefore, we have our MSGP. So you need to comply with whatever our MSGP, our TCQ MSGP, the TXR uh, 0, 050,000 permit. That's the one that applies to you or to entities here in Texas. Um, if we don't have sector S is for the airports. We don't have anything uh, similar to what EPA uh, changed. So you don't have to worry about that during this permit cycle. Who knows for the next permit renewal? But for now, we have not included some of the changes that they included, such as um, indicator monitoring for PAHS, which are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So for now, um, don't worry about that for now. 
worry about what is in our Texas MSGP when we renew it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rebecca. Uh, Laura, did you have something to add to that? No, I was putting my next. I'm a, I'm the next question. Oh, okay. Go ahead and read it off. Man. Thank you. Okay. Um, without the publication of the final notice regarding produced wastewater in the Federal Register, how is TCEQ moving forward to begin this permitting process? And the answer to that is uh, EPA signed the memorandum of agreement. Um, that was included in our application on Friday, January 15th. And so signature of that memorandum of agreement is when program authority effectively changed. And so that is the beginning date of our authority is uh, January 15th. And the, the Federal Register notice uh, was published. I believe it was published. It's maybe Monday or Tuesday, I, off the top of my head, I don't recall which day it was, um, but there, the Federal Regi Register notice was published. Um, so um, I would encourage you to go and, and read that. Um, again, it was either published on Tuesday or Wednesday. And I'll just jump right into the next one because um, it's also related to House Bill 2771. Wow. Will open enforcement matters be transferred to TCEQ? Uh, the answer to that is no. The memorandum of agreement uh, set up a couple of scenarios where permits will not be transferred initially to TCEQ. They will actually be retained by EPA. So EPA will retain uh, program authority for permits where there's an open enforcement action, as well as for those permits where there is a pending application for either a variance request or a permit amendment. So if you have a permit application in one of those scenarios, EPA will retain your permit until they finish processing that permit application. If you have an open enforcement action, um, EPA will retain that permit, including permitting actions, uh, until that enforcement action is closed. All right, thank you, Lori. Um, next question, has the chapter 319 for the MUR been finalized? I'm assuming this is a methods update rule uh, being referenced here. Uh, I know the answer is, is no, it's not finalized yet, but I guess, uh, Rebecca, would you have any other information about that? Or? Uh, no, the, the rule has not been finalized yet. It's still in, in the works. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Um, next question is for uh, Lori, if you want to take that one, Lori. Yes, sir. Uh, does the 180 day renewal application deadline also apply to TXG 11? Uh, I kind of touched on that a little earlier. Uh, general permit, you would apply within 90 days after expiration. So on the TXG 11, you're going to apply after uh, it expires. I think it expires in November. So you'll have 90 days after um, November the 7th or 2nd. <laughs> we have two of them that expire right there together. Um, you'll have 90 days after it expires. But for individual permits, it is 180 days before expiration. And I'll just roll right into the next question because it also pertains to the same topic. Is the 180 day requirement for all domestic and industrial permits, or is that a comment specific to the oil and gas? It applies to all domestic wastewater, industrial wastewater, as well as industrial stormwater. Um, I'll, I'll touch base with Rebecca on MS4. Is the I'm guessing that same, it's in our boilerplate, so that same 180-day requirement would also apply to MS4s, the, the Phase 1 MS4s. Yeah. So that's not specific to just the oil and gas. Correct. So Rebecca is affirming, yes, MS4, MS4 Phase 1 also has the 180-day renewal requirement. So with that, I'll just jump right into the next one, more oil and gas. Um, for oil and gas, 
do you do you continue to report to Railroad Commission and EPA until EP, until TCEQ issues a new permit? Really, it has to do with who has jurisdiction. So again, I mentioned earlier um, scenarios where EPA is going to retain jurisdiction, those open enforcement actions, uh, permit applications with variances or um, amendments pending with EPA. They're going to keep those. If EPA retains authority over your permit, you will need to uh, continue submitting your, your BMRs, your any uh, progress reports, annual reports, periodic reports of any kind to EPA. For all those other permits that did not get retained by EPA, you will begin submitting that information to TCEQ effective immediately. Thanks, Lori. Uh, the next couple of questions uh, looks like those are in, in, in Rebecca's territory. So, Rebecca, if you want to just read those off and answer them, thank you very much. OK, so the one at 158, there was some discussion about whether the sand mining BMP rule might be applicable statewide at some point. Were any comments submitted requesting that? requesting that. So that topic will be addressed in the RTC, or is the rulemaking still specific to the San Jacinto Basin? Uh, right now, the current rulemaking that we are doing or that we've started for the San Jacinto River watershed, it's only specific to that. Once we go back to the commissioners and we present you know, the draft rule, um, and maybe before it gets finalized, then they may direct us to to do something else, but for now, the rulemaking is specific to just the Saco Central River area. Okay, so then the next one is minus well. If we have if we have had a change in signatory authority for the site, do we need to notify now or wait until the renewal of the multi-sector general permit? Well, right now, if if it if it's something that changed now, then you need to make that change now because you still need to comply with the general um, permit requirements. And so you need to make sure that you are uh, current. Now, when the new permit um, gets issued and you need to submit your notice of intent for renewal, then the new signatory, not the delegated, but whoever is the official signatory needs to submit that application. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, another oil and gas one up next for Lori, looks like. Okay, for oil and gas, um, do spills to water of the state get reported to TCQ or Railroad Commission? So spills, uh, wastewater spills would be reported to TCQ now. All right, thank you, Lori. Um, next question, Rebecca, I think this might be for you, but let me just read through it here uh, so we can all hear it. Is it permissible for storm waters to run a more current method than that listed in the 40 CFR? For example, quoting SM or standard methods 2540 2015 for TSS rather than the 2011 version. I would request that you please submit that question to us so that we can do that research and answer. But we always typically go if it's whatever in the newest version of 40 CFR, but also if you're meeting the permit limit, if you have a permit limit or it's something that meets our MAL, our minimum analytical level. So I'm not sure exactly where you're going on this question. So I suggest that you please submit your question to our inbox. We have our mailbox swgp at tcq.texas.gov. You submit your questions, we'll be happy to, to address your specific needs through email or a phone call if needed. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, next one, I'm not sure it's a question. Let me, let me read it out and see. Uh, TAC or Texas Administrative Code 319.11c states 
Effluent shall be analyzed according to test methods specified in 40 CFR Part 136, where more recent additions are st of standard methods for the examination of water and wastewater than those cited in Part 136. Maybe that's Rebecca was a kind of a continuation of the previous question. Yeah, I think that's a uh, continuation of the previous question. And like I said, um, yes, whatever is in 40 CFR 136 needs to be uh, used, but um, depending on the kind of permit that you have, then what you quoted the supply. Some uh, permits is very specific to only allowing 40 CFR Part 136 or any method that's sufficiently sensitive to show compliance with your permit limits or requirements. So again, I still think that this is a very specific question in a certain uh, program or team. So I really think it's best that you send us that question so we can make sure that we address it adequately for the type of permit that you have. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Um, next middle we got was just the letters MRG. I'm not sure what that means or if uh, it was just a mistake or whoever typed that, if you had something else to add to it that we could uh, understand what you're, you're trying to ask or get at, uh, please follow up with, a, with another submittal. And uh, so next up is another oil and gas one for Lori. All right, uh, the question, oil and gas injection well disposal. Is that Railroad Commission or TCEQ? Um, House Bill 2771 transferred uh, regulatory authority for wastewater discharges into water in the state. Uh, it did not change who has jurisdiction for injection well disposal. So uh, no changes to who uh, the, the regulatory authority is on injection wells. The next one I think is, is tied to me as well. Um, I believe the Federal Register notice that was released, um, like I mentioned earlier on Monday, or, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday or Wednesday, um, was a pre-publication uh, document. It was not an official Federal Register notice. And so the next question, when will the EPA response to comments be available? Um, I don't have an answer to that. That's uh, in, in EPA's wheelhouse. Um, we'll have to just wait for the, that document to be uh, made available by EPA. And next question, um, can we say what the response has been in terms of permit applications for wastewater discharge from oil and gas facilities since the announcement made yesterday? Um, what's the expected timeline in terms of receiving an application and either issuing a permit or offering a response? Understanding that one general permit to discharge hydrostatic test water is currently available, two general permits to authorize discharges from certain oil and gas facilities are expected to be available late summer. What additional details can you offer about those permits? So let me unpack that um, one at a time. Um, I think the first part of that was um, how many applications for oil and gas facilities have we received yet? I do not have that information. Um, I would, we would need to run reports to, to get that information. Um, so I, I don't know the answer to that right now. Um, what's the expected timeline for receiving an application and uh, and either issuing the permit or offering a response. So our typical time frame for reviewing and processing permit applications is 330 days. Um, that includes an administrative review, a technical review, a public notice, a response to any comments that are received um, up through final issuance, um, or if we opt to deny a permit. So you're looking at about 330 days for processing time frame. Um, as far as the general permits, so um, as the commenter mentioned, um, there is the hydrostatic test water general permit that's available now. So any oil and gas facilities um, that need to avail themselves of a hydrostatic test permit can, can submit an application um, through our e-permits module um, to get coverage under our hydrostatic test general permit. Again, that general permit um, is for hydrostatically testing waters. You only need to submit a notice of intent if the vessel previously contained um, petroleum products or waste related to petroleum products. So if you are hydrostatically testing a vessel that is new, it's never had anything in it, 
or if it only had raw water or potable water in it, um, you do not need to submit a notice of intent to get coverage under that general permit. Um, the other two general permits that we're working on, um, one is a general permit to, um, to replace EPA's general permit TXG uh, 26 and TXG 33. Um, we are working on that draft now. Uh, we have we've just tentatively started um, work on an outer continental shelf general permit. The outer continental shelf general permit is a state only permit, so it would provide state authorization to oil and gas facilities out three, you know, past three miles from shore. Um, facilities out in the outer, outer continental shelf would have to submit um, and apply for the TCQ permit for state authority, as well as EPA's GMG 29 general permit for federal authority. So out in the outer continental shelf, um, two permits will still be required, one from EPA and one from TCEQ. And I'll just keep rolling because the next one's mine as well. Um, which permits did you say we had to apply for 180 days in advance? So that's going to be individual permits for domestic wastewater, so public domestic wastewater, private domestic wastewater, industrial wastewater, industrial stormwater, and MS4 phase one. I'll pass the torch to Rebecca on, I think, the next one. Is there an updated timeline on when the Chapter 319 rule revision 2017 analytical MUR will become effective? So um, thank you for that question. This uh, I'm going to revise my answer that I gave earlier when I was asked, you know, is the MUR 319 rule finalized and I said no, but sorry, uh, mistake. It was finalized and it was effective uh, November 12th of 2020. So that rule, rulemaking for Chapter 319 related to the MUR has been finalized. So then now the question is, is uh, oh, I guess <laughs> it, it went away to get published. Hold on, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the timeline that it has been. Um, the rule itself has been finalized. We're still working on the implementation procedure, so make sure that you know you don't get that confused. The rule itself was revised um, to address the MUR, but now we're still working on the implementation procedures to be updated regarding Appendix E, where we have the the methods and the analytical minimum analytical methods uh, and minimum analytical levels uh, MALs included. So make sure that. Um, you stay tuned on that for that. We're still working on that and we will update our web page as soon as we have that information, but also stay tuned in tune with the implementation process because that is going to be going through the process, uh, I think, this spring. And so that's when you will be able to see Appendix E and the revised uh, MALs and methods will be included there. Okay. Um, so my next, the next question is for uh, my team, uh, Rebecca. When MSGP facilities submit for renewal after August 14, will they be charged a 200 application fee? Um, they will be charged in the application fee when they renew. However, as I said earlier, if you apply electronically, their application fee is cheaper. It's only $100 because we're making everybody apply um, or required for everybody to apply electronically unless you apply for a waiver from electronic reporting and you get that granted then you will apply via paper which then you pay the higher fee of two hundred dollars okay the next question stormwater management plan question we are still waiting approval of our stormwater management program submitted july 2019 when can we anticipate approval um, that is very specific to, to you. You know, we did receive over 550 applications. We're still working on the technical review of them. So please send an email, you know, to my team, either swgp um, at tcq.texas.gov, and we will 
get your specific information and tell you where your application is along the process to see if it has been administratively reviewed, to see if it's already gone through water quality standards review, to see if it's in technical review. There's a lot of steps, so we need to make sure that we know who you are so we can tell you where you are along the process. Okay. Lori. I'll take this one. Um, individual wastewater permit. What if you want to let your permit expire? Are you required to notify TCQ of the expiration? So for individual permit, um, you can allow your permit to expire and you're not required to cancel it. However, I would caution, if your permit is active on September 1, each year, you will get billed the annual water quality fee. <clears throat> so if, if you don't have to you don't have to terminate your permit ahead of time, but be aware of that September 1 date and you if your permit is still active, you will get billed that annual water quality fee. <clears throat> With that I'll move into my next question um, regarding the new oil and gas permits under TCQ, TCQ jurisdiction. <clears throat> will MS4s be required to enforce any of these permits? Which permits fall under this category? So I'm going to take a stab at it and I'm going to have Rebecca jump in and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, MS4 is her program. Um, so oil and gas permits, EPA and Railroad Commission have been issuing permits for oil and gas facilities for decades in the state of Texas. Um, the only thing that is changing is who is issuing those permits. So rather than EPA issuing a permit and TCQ issuing a permit, I'm sorry, instead of EPA and railroad issuing separate permits, TCQ will now be issuing a permit. So um, whether MS4 is required to enforce any of those permits, that should not be changing. So if you're required to enforce permits within your jurisdiction, you should have been enforcing those EPA and railroad permits all this time. Rebecca's nodding her head, yes. <laughs> so uh, we'll move on to the next uh, next comment. Um, this is a comment saying the application for program authorization should be available and posted on epa.regulation.gov. So thank you for, for that comment. Next one, my railroad commission permit has different limits than my NPDES permit. NetDMR only has NPDES limits. How do I report the railroad commission requirements to TCEQ? Um, I believe you're going to have to submit those in paper format. Um, any discharge monitoring requirements or reporting requirements such as annual reports, periodic reports, um, anything that you would normally submit to railroad commission you can submit to the TCQ compliance monitoring team. You will need to include MC-224. Again, that's TCQ compliance monitoring team. And you'll include MC-224. And the address is PO Box 13087, Austin, Texas 787. One, one. I'll repeat that one more time so everybody gets the address. It is the TCQ Compliance Monitoring Team, MC224, Post Office Box 13087, Austin, Texas 78711. Next question, do you um, are there changes to the NetDMR account? Uh, oh, do you change anything in your NetDMR account to make the report go to TCEQ? Actually, um, you'll need to get an account with the TCEQ NetDMR, NetDMR system. So you cannot use your EPA NetDMR account ID and, and username, password, etc. cetera. Um, you will need to log in to uh, get a TCEQ DMR account. And if you will go to our homepage, up on the very top right corner, there's a search engine. If you put in NetDMR, the first return will pull up our NetDMR page and it'll, it'll walk you through 
where to create your account and, and all of that. Uh, there'll be information there about how to create that account, et cetera. Next question, follow up on the question regarding the transfer of permits from EPA to CCQ. If the individual permit was issued by EPA, EPA retains jurisdiction until the permit is renewed or reissued by CCQ. If, if EPA retains EPA will retain jurisdiction um, if there is a pending application for an amendment or a pending application for a variance request. Um, so you will continue working with EPA uh, on that permit application until that permit is issued, at which time uh, regulatory authority would transfer to TCEQ, including the compliance monitoring. If you have an EPA permit that is retained by EPA because you have an, an open enforcement action, again, you will continue with all of your, everything from permitting to compliance, monitoring, compliance reporting, will stay with the EPA until that enforcement action is closed, at which time that permit will then transfer to TCEQ and we'll take over any permitting and compliance monitoring from that point forward. There's a second part of that question. Um, DMR annual and quarterly reports will still be submitted to EPA until TCEQ reissues the permit. No. If, if your permit jurisdiction transfers to TCEQ, which is going to be the majority of, of folks, um, there's, there may be only a few that get retained by EPA. If, you, if your permitting authority gets transferred to TCEQ, you will need to submit all of your DMRs, your annual quarterly progress report, any other kind of report that's due, you'll need to submit those to TCEQ. Do you not submit them to EPA, as I mentioned in my, in my presentation. Um, Railroad Commission and EPA are currently um, boxing up all of their files, so they will be sending those files to us. So if your permit transfers to TCEQ, you need to be submitting any of your anything that you would submit to those other agencies you need to start being submitted to TCEQ. And then there's, for example, if the permit does not expire until 2024, the permit you will continue to report to EPA. No, you will report to TCEQ. Next question, checking about the answer regarding retention of NPDES permit authority when enforcement action is open. Um, I think active permit still transfers, but compliance and enforcement is retained. Active permit, if you have an active permit um, with EPA, it will transfer to us. The only thing that is being retained from a permitting perspective at EPA is if you have a pending application with EPA that is for a amendment or a variance request. So if you have a renewal application pending with EPA, or if you have a new application pending with EPA, those applications will transfer to TCEQ and TCEQ will take over uh, processing those applications. Question, will this video be available online for later viewing with regards to the Q&A? The answer to that is yes. Um, we will, it usually takes us about a week, sometimes two weeks, um, before we can post the, the, uh, the video online. Um, we have to do a lot of work to, to do closed captioning, and that typically takes a lot of time. Um, so it, be patient. It'll be, it'll be put up. Um, it'll be on the TCQ YouTube page. Um, again, be patient. It may take up to two weeks. Next question, we're waiting for EPA to move the permits over to the system for oil and gas to be able to link the permits in CBX. So they may not get, they may not have access yet to report in that DMR. Oh, that's from Macy. Thank you, Macy. <laughs> um, Macy Beecham is with our compliance monitoring folks. Um, I appreciate her chiming in. Um, another another uh, comment. Looks like this one may be from EPA sharing information. Additional information um, to access comments, 
on epa.regulations.gov. Uh, you need to input the docket number. So when you're searching for those, um, when you go to epa.regulations.gov, be sure to enter the docket number, which is EPA dash R06 dash OW dash 2020 dash 0608. Again, uh, when we publish that comment, you'll have that information. Um, next question, will our company get a letter saying it has transferred the permit to TCEQ? As part of the memorandum of agreement um, with EPA, um, EPA is required to notify permittees within 30 days of, of program transfer. So 30 days from January 15th, roughly speaking, January, I'm sorry, February 15th, which is on a Monday. So roughly speaking, February 15th, um, facilities should be getting notified um, about their, per their permits being transferred to TCQ. Is there a projected date for posting the materials from the HB 2771 oil and gas workshop that TCU conducted earlier this month? Um, I have received that question a couple of times. Uh, we are working to get the, that workshop posted online. Um, again, it takes a couple of weeks. I recognize that today is two weeks from the date that that workshop took place. So be patient. It should be posted out on the TCQ YouTube channel. And I believe that is all of our questions. So I appreciate all those questions. And, and, and also, I want to remind folks there were a lot of oil and gas questions. I encourage you to submit your questions to the HB2771 at tcq.texas.gov email. Please do that um, so that we can compile all of these questions. Great questions, by the way. Uh, we can compile these so folks who maybe didn't um, get to participate in this um, in this forum or um, maybe they don't know to watch this and, and look at the Q&As. As we compile these frequently asked questions, we'll be able to share that information with folks. And we hopefully won't have to answer the same question multiple times. That's the goal. And we want to be consistent with our answers. So uh, again, oil and gas questions, send an email to HB2771 at tcq.texas.gov. And I believe that email address is on our agenda for today. So um, you'll have it down there as well. So with that, I will turn it back over to Ray. All right, thank you, Lori and Rebecca both for answering all those questions. Uh, appreciate that. And I just want to uh, give a couple announcements before we uh, close the meeting um, for this afternoon. As uh, Lori probably mentioned earlier, we've got a uh, another House Bill 2771 stakeholder meeting coming up on March 18th uh, in a couple months. I believe that's a Thursday. And uh, she mentioned the email address for that to HB2771. If, if you want to get added to the stakeholder list, uh, you can use that email address, which is again is HB2771 at tcq.texas.gov. Uh, and you can get at, added to the stakeholder list and get all the future uh, correspondence related to those those stakeholder meetings. And then last announcement, uh, this being a quarterly meeting, we'll hold our, our next one in three months. So that'll be on Tuesday, April 20th of 2021. So stay tuned uh, as we get closer to that date for uh, announcements of the meeting and uh, the, the proposed agenda for that meeting as well. So, um, so I believe that's all we needed to cover this afternoon. I appreciate everyone's uh, attendance and uh, joining us for the meeting and uh, hope you have a good rest of the day um, and work week and we'll see you again in a few months. Thank you all so much. Bye.